Hey folks, welcome to part four of my video series on constructivism. So in this final part, we're going to briefly talk about experiential learning theory. And while this isn't a constructivism itself, it does draw very heavily on constructivism theories. So experiential learning theory originates in the mid 1980s. So we are now moving into learning theories that originated during a time period where some of us actually existed. And a landmark work here in this area is David Kolb's 1984 experiential learning which we're going to focus on this theory here. Um, he has a number of other works and elaborations he has put out um, since then on this theory though. And it is important to note here that his work is influenced by other theorists. So his experiential learning theory was very much influenced by um, Piaget, who we just discussed today, um, John Dewey, Lewin. He was also influenced by some other learning theorists that we're discussing this semester, like Lev Vygotsky, who we just discussed in our previous video, and Paulo Freire, who we will discuss in our next module. And Kolb claimed that all of these different theorists seem to be understanding learning as being a process with, he argued, four stages, which could be depicted as one big learning cycle. And so our focused reading by Denick this week also points out that despite having these constructivist roots, um, it's been interpreted, reinterpreted, and misinterpreted so many times by so many people over the years that sometimes with this learning theory, it can be a little difficult to see the constructivist concepts. In short, uh, Kolb sees learning as being a process where knowledge is creating through the transformation of experiences. And he proposes that knowledge arises from the amalgamation of grasping experience, wherein one is taking in information, and subsequent interpretation and action, which is a transforming experience. And so on the screen here, you can see an image of Kolb's experiential learning cycle. And this theory proposes a learning cycle with four stages, concrete experiences occurring in the experiential world, Reflective observation, wherein the learner makes sense of the experience. Abstract conceptualization, wherein the learner is extracting what they've learned and considering what it means to them, and then assimilating it into existing knowledge. And then the final stage, which is ex active experimentation, wherein one tries out what they have learned. So in short, experiential learning is a recursive cycle wherein someone is experiencing, reflecting, thinking, and acting. And Kolb suggests that a learner can start this learning process at any of these four points. And while using all four of these points will optimize learning in some situations, just one or even a combination of some of these may be used. And so when we're learning this learning theory, we are typically aiming to walk our learners through this process. And this is the theory that's used quite a bit in medical education. Uh, for example, in medical residency, a resident may have a patient encounter related to something they recently learned. So a concrete experience. Then to foster reflective observation, the educator could have them do something like self-assessing their learning from the situation. The educator can then guide the resident to deeper their understanding or abstract conceptualization, um, such as having a discussion about relationships among similar concepts. And then for active experimentation, the resident can apply these, this new understanding to their practice. And I think with this example, we very easily could swap out medical resident for other types of learners, for example, um, teachers candidates as well. And we're just going to end off this short one here with a few challenges and critiques of this theory. So like all theories we discussed, it is not without its criticism. Uh, so for example, some question whether learning actually fits into a cycle, when in reality it can be quite fragmented and quite chaotic. Specifically in workplaces, learning can be quite unstructured and quite haphazard. So does learning actually fit nicely into a cycle like this? And another critique of this theory is that it does not account for the influence the social context will have on the concrete experience and the subsequent learning. Alrighty, and I think that's all for now, folks. I hope these videos helped you um, make more sense of constructivism and their applications to teaching. And please let me know if you have any questions. And as always, I will see you all online. Bye.